But if you need a little refresher, here is my SQL study plan. Understand how to manipulate date and timestamp data effectively. My experience with Python text screens mainly revolve around data wrangling and database manipulation. So I have some updates. Two companies reached out and they wanted to have the HR phone screen. So I scheduled one for today and one for tomorrow. The HR phone screen is pretty typical. It's just one, a way for them to know that I'm a real person, have a conversation with me. Two is for them to gauge if I'm the right candidate for this role. Three is for me to gauge if this role is what I'm looking for, if it's the right fit for me. And four, we will probably graze very briefly around salary expectations that's really important for any job and then lastly we'll go over next steps for the interview process if we both feel like it's a good fit I remember at the start of my career I used to be so nervous for these HR phone screens because I'm like what if they don't like me what if they don't move me forward I think what's changed is these days I know exactly the kind of role that I want I know what skills I want to develop with my next role I know my salary goals with all of that it just puts me in a position of power and it gives me a lot of confidence to lead the conversations. The tech recruiting cycle is so freaking long. I've personally been in interview loops where I had six to eight interviews in total and it spanned over four to six weeks before I even heard back about a decision. That process repeats for every single company that you decide to interview for. So make sure that you like the role, make sure that all of the expectations are set at the get-go and you're happy with that before you invest all of your time and energy into interviewing with them. Hello? Hi, yes, I'm good, how are you? Yes, I'm based in New York, how about you? Yeah, of course. So my name is Julia. I worked at Spotify. I was there for almost five years and my expertise is in experimentation and driving insight proven features to market. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great.
Good morning. Today we are getting some studying done. I am not going outside today. I'm just gonna sit myself at the seat and study. So both of the HR phone calls went well and the next step in the interview process is the tech screen. I mentioned this previously but I'm only applying to product data science roles. Product data science is a specialized role within the field of data science that leverages data to optimize and enhance certain products or features or services offered by a company. Some things that we do include analyze user behavior, perform A-B testing, and develop predictive models to improve products or user behavior. If you want to learn more about my day-to-day -day as a product data scientist at my old role, I have a bunch of videos on that. I also found a great Medium article that gives a holistic view of what product data science does and all of the different aspects of our work and who we work with, so I will link that down below as well. I preface all of this because obviously the kind of role you apply for reflects the kind of interviews that you get and the kind of technical questions that you get. So as a product data scientist, I've only ever got in questions that were Python or SQL based. I thought for today's study session, we can take things nice and slow and we can start off with the basics of SQL. I used SQL every single day at work, so I didn't need to spend too much time reviewing, but if you need a little refresher, here is my SQL study plan. Review the basics. Understand fundamental syntax like select, from, where, group by, having, order by, and the different types of joins in their applications. Tackle intermediate problems. Practice using aggregate functions such as count, sum, min, max, average, and techniques like case statements and working with distinct values. Master advanced functions. This includes all the window functions, CTEs, and subqueries. It's also really important that you understand how to manipulate date and timestamp data effectively. I don't think the use cases or questions asked for SQL diverge that much, and I never had a SQL tech screen that didn't touch upon window functions or edge cases that involved date and timestamps, so it's crucial to have a solid grasp of these concepts. For these first three steps, I highly recommend Mode Analytics SQL Tutorial. It effectively caters to both beginners and seasoned SQL users by providing comprehensive explanations and exercises. What's great is that it comes with a query editor, allowing you to practice and validate your understanding in real time. The material is completely free to access, but if you want to use the query editor, which is also free, you just have to sign up for an account. When you feel like you have a good grasp of the language, it's time to practice, practice, practice. I personally like to use LeetCode for practice problems. Currently, I'm working through their SQL 50 study plan, which includes 50 50 basic to intermediate SQL questions. I try to do five a day, but you can take it at your own pace. If you really want to challenge yourself and think these questions are a tad bit too easy, I love Emma Ding's article on window functions. She not only provides insightful explanations through her YouTube video, but also offers a list of advanced practice problems to really help you refine your SQL skills. The free version of LeetCode has its limitations, and although you can still draw a lot of value from it, I personally have the subscription. Just a note that none of the tools or websites I've mentioned are sponsored. They're platforms I've personally relied on for my own learning and growth, and I'm sharing them with you all because I believe in their effectiveness and value. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
my mom would be proud. Astrid and Miu sent over some jewelry pieces. They also invited me to their store earlier this week. And I got three charms. The first one is this Scorpio sign. This one is my birth month sign. I think it's like citron or citrus. And this one is, I don't know if you can see it, but it's half a heart and Yuan has the other half. Oh, their packaging is so cute. This is a necklace. I really only wear thin necklaces, so I'm really excited to style something more bold and chunky. Ooh. I don't know if you can tell, but it's a little warped. So it is a little twist on the classic hoop earring, which I love. The last piece. Wait, I love that. <gasps> This pair is like bold yet minimal at the same time. <gasps> Look, I'm gonna wear these today. So cute. Okay, quick outfit of the day. Trousers are from W Concept. They're pinstriped, not sure if you can tell through the camera. The jacket is from Koss, button down is from Uniqlo. And today we're just gonna head over to a coffee shop to do some more studying. My experience with Python text screens mainly revolve around data wrangling and database manipulation. I rarely encounter data structure or algorithm style coding questions. With that being said though, I will still go through some leak code easy questions and try to answer them in Python because I believe it's crucial to maintain a strong grasp of Python fundamentals. My library of choice for data wrangling is Pandas and Kaggle offers an excellent free quick course to refresh your skills in data manipulation with Pandas. They provide exercises that you can run using their notebooks as well and additionally, Kaggle offers access to numerous public datasets and notebooks. Another resource I love is this GitHub repo filled with Panda exercises. It's split up into different chapters with solutions and even includes video walkthroughs. Even though I use Pandas and Python frequently at work, walking through this repo has been immensely helpful. 